Welcome to this video on preparing an app for upload. In this video we will be covering adding the icons and splash screens to your PhoneGate build project. This process is performed inside the config.xml file. We'll be adding today two new tags to this file that uses the following tags, the icon tag and for the splash screens it uses get splash tags. So the first thing we need to do is take our icons and splash screens that we developed in the previous lessons and put them into our PhoneGate build project folder. Open up your app and go to where we previously saved everything. Copy those two files and paste them into our project folder. With iOS, they won't accept your directory names having a space in them so just make sure you've got no spaces if so replace them with an underscore and there were two icons that we developed previously that you do not actually put into this project and that's your iTunes artwork and your iTunes artwork at times two we'll need to delete them out of here those are actually uploaded separately when you're uploading to the store now we need to go to Dreamweaver and go to our files panel just quickly refresh it so that our icons and splash screen folders show up in there and our icons are all there and then we need to open the config.xml file because we are going to upload this to PhoneGap build first thing that we're going to do is just quickly change our version numbers just so that we don't forget to do it later on before we upload because if you don't do it when you try to put it onto your phone it won't actually update so you won't be seeing any changes then under plugins we're going to put in a new section for icons the first icon that we're going to put in is the default icon this is the icon that will be used if the app encounters a situation where it doesn't know what icon to use. For this, we're going to use the icon small at two times dot png. Because this icon is 80 by 80 pixels, it's not too small if it needs to be enlarged, but at the same time, we don't really need to be putting in the largest icon that we have available to us. This icon tag is the easiest of them all. Uh, the only property that it needs is the source property. We know that our files are all in the icon folder and we have our icon file name there and that's it for the default icon. Now we're going to move on to adding our iOS icons. So we're going to, I'm just going to paste in the entire section. We're going to section it off for iOS. Make sure that we separate our iOS and Android. And inside we're going to have sections for iPhone 6, 6 Plus, iPhone, iPad, settings icons and spotlight icons. Inside each of these sections we have our icon tags and like the default icon we have our source which was our icons folder and then we have our file name but it also has a couple of extra properties all icons for iOS need the GAP platform equals iOS all in small letters and then we need the width property and this needs to match, match the pixel widths of the icons that we did before and same with the height because all iPhone 6s and 6 Pluses have uh, Retina display, we only need one icon for those. As you can see in the iPhone and iPod Touch, we have two icons in here. And that's because we need to make sure that we have the non-Retina version and the Retina version. Now that we have those in there, it's now time to move on to adding our Android icons so we're just going to drop the androids in there I've just copied them 
across. Now as you can see with the Androids, the icon tags are slightly different. Like the Android and the default, we have our source. We define that the same way as we did before. And we have get platform equals Android. Now where iOS had width and height, this is not used with Android. Instead, we use a GAP qualifier equals LDPI or MDPI. Uh, make sure that this just matches your file names. Because Android comes in so many different screen sizes, they do not use the width and height. The GAP qualifier just matches the resolutions of the screen. Just to make things a little easier to read, I'm going to indent the iOS and Android sections. Just so that we can see that that is the icon section. And then we're going to add a new section for our splash screens. I'll just paste it in the splash screens and our default splash screen. As we can see here, uh, the tag instead of being icon is gap splash equals source. And like before, we just use the source property for this. We don't give it a, a gap qualifier or a width or a height. We just give it the source and that's it for the default splash screen. And now we can move on to the iOS section. Just going to paste in the iOS section. Make things a little easier to read by indenting everything inside the iOS section. And we can see as before we separated it into iPod, iPhone, We've also got iPhone 5, iPhone 6, and iPad. Like before, the tag itself is gap splash. We then need to give it our source, tell it where the file is and which file to use. And then we have gap platform equals iOS, just like we did with the icon tags. And again, like we did with the icon tags, we have the width and height properties for iOS. These width and height Numbers need to match the pixel dimensions of the splash screens that we created before. As we did before, we also have the non-retina display versions and the retina display versions. In the iPhone 6, I've actually got two here. They're not retina, uh, non-retina and retina display. They're actually, the top one's iPhone 6 and the bottom one is the iPhone 6 Plus. Now that we've had those in there, we can then move on to the next section, which is the Android splash screens. Just paste those in there and then to cross make it easier to read. Like the iOS splash screens, the tag is gap splash. We had the source like we did before and gap platform now equals Android. Like we did with the icons where we had width and height for iOS and a gap qualifier for Android, we have to use the gap qualifier for the Android splash screens. And again, it's just to match the pixel density of the Android screens that it will be displayed on. We now have all of our icons and splash screens for both iOS and Android, as well as the default icon and splash screen into our project. So it's now time to save our config.xml file and we'll hop out of Dreamweaver, go to where our folder is located and we're going to zip it up ready to be uploaded to PhoneGap. So let's go to PhoneGap, go into our restaurant app going to update the code, choose file, navigate to where we saved it, uh, it's over there it is. and hit upload. Now you'll notice the icon at the moment is the default phone get build icon. We'll now start the build process. And you'll notice that the icon has now changed to our default icon. 
ignore the error that it's giving on the iOS at the moment. The PhoneGate build servers are having an issue with iOS. It should be fixed up later today. But for you, this will be a blue button. And now you'll be able to download the app onto your test devices and see the icons and splash screens at work. Uh, that's it for this video. The next video we'll be covering how to fix the status bar on iOS.